Hey guys, Loki Waffles here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to fill those ordinary little bits in your sketchbook. You know the ones, where you make that big sketch and you've got this blank space all around it and you don't really know what to do, or when you do a couple little sketches and you've got that terrible little bit right there in the page and it's like you, you can't put in anything in there. It doesn't fit. Well, I'm going to be showing you my four main methods that I use for, um, in my sketchbooks for sprucing up the page for adding a bit of life for or even for when I don't feel like drawing that much um, so I'm going to be working in this sketchbook that I'm doing with my friend it's a collab sketchbook we send it over the mail and I've kind of been falling behind it of late um, as you can see I've got my OC Holly on the page in this fun little chibi style that I have been doing lately and I really like it it's really cool and um, yeah so I'm doing the line art here. I sped this video up quite a bit because I, you know, it was like 30 minutes long and I did not want to voice over a 30 minute long video and that was after I sped it up a considerable amount. So this is a bit of a draw with me. I've got um, this in the background but it's not exactly a draw with me in the full sense of the word if you know what I mean. Um, so about the lighting, I didn't use my normal lighting for this, I decided to try using natural lighting from the window at around 5pm, and it was not the best. My room only gets a certain amount of lighting during the day, and I tried to do time it during like the so-called golden hour, but it didn't work the best, and it kind of got really, really bright. So if you guys like this, um, let me know, if you don't let me know in the comments below because it's really helpful and I'm starting out just starting out and I don't really know what to do when it comes to lighting and like where I should be filming or what kind of lighting I should be using so if you guys like the sped up versions um, tell me that as well because it's really helpful and it lets me know what you guys like to see my first tip is use stars it's really fun it's really cool it adds like adds a kind of feel and it adds, it's just so cool. You see I've already drawn a considerable amount and I'm drawing more. I love drawing little stars and doodles and like clusters of them in my sketchbook. It's just really fun and really easy and it gets the job done really well. Here you can see all sorts of things going on. I'm, I'm doing little like, I don't know, not pentagrams because that's not what they are but like I don't know else how to describe them uh, they're just really like small little doodly stars scratchy very easy to do and I really like them they add a lot of personality to the page and it makes it feel just kind of like pop art or digital art or something you'd see on Pinterest or something and it's a lot it adds quite a flair to the page without being that much effort Uh, these are my next sketches. They're mushrooms. I wasn't really sure what I was doing with this. I accidentally added some faces to them when I really didn't want to, but it's like Bob Ross says, happy accidents happen. And um, while I don't believe these look the best, it was still a happy accident. I'm using the Prismacolor Colorace for um, sketching this kind of dark blue. This shows up a lot better on camera than the light blue did. I'll, so it definitely, it's a lot better than last time. Um, I'm doing like a kind of a puffball mushroom. I think that one was edible. I did a couple of poisonous ones. Uh, I did some like fungus on a tree. Though I've considerably improved in drawing trees. Like just from today, I've been work. I was working on them, and I was like, "Oh, that looks kind of good." So it is posted on my Pinterest. Uh, I go by Loki Waffles on there. I can put a link in the description below. It's where I post most of my like little sketchbook things and tiny updates. Although I will be having a larger sketchbook tour coming up soon. Um, uh, I have six sketchbooks though, so I'm not sure if I want to do like six videos over time or like do it all in one go. Also, do you guys want to see my first sketchbook or my last sketchbook first? Like, do you want to see my first sketchbook first or do you want to see my last sketchbook first? Because I'm not quite sure which one to do.
Now my second method is just blocking in an enormous amount of color behind the character or sketch that you're doing. I usually like to add like a circle or a rectangle behind a character that I've drawn on a page. Usually I draw very small, so um, I will add a, a shape behind them, blocking in color behind them, and it adds more of like a focal point to your character. It makes them seem more like, like your eye is drawn to it, basically. Um, here I actually just cover the entire thing in uh, color, but I don't mind it. It looks kind of good. And I also added some color to my stars and little accessories that I drew on the opposite page in order to f make the spread feel a lot more complete. And that's about it. That's my first two tips. Now on to my third. This method is another one that I use quite frequently. It is the collage method, and it's really cool for like... Um, if you don't have a lot of, like, if you have a couple loose sketches lying around and you've got an empty spread and you don't know what to do, I usually draw two or three sketches. In fact, you saw me use the collage method on my last video, and I'm using it again here. I make two or three sketches, color them in on, like, separate sheets of scrap paper, and then I paste them in with like random stickers, random pieces of paper that I've saved and squirreled away like the hoarder I am. And I also use like any, any like receipts I can find, any random movie tickets. I love using movie tickets. They're the best for that. And I just arrange them in a way in the page that makes it seem most natural to me and what fits whatever character or theme I'm going for. Here I'm drawing my character, um, well it's not actually my character, it's from one of the worlds I've created, uh, related to my character Lila that I draw frequently, but this one's a different character, I think I kind of just create an OC off of the top of my head, which is something I frequently tend to do. Um, as you can see, I'm just coloring in with alcohol marker. I decided to try a different approach. Instead of doing the line art first, I decided to do the marker first, and it actually works very well. I used Prismacolor and Ohuhu's. I don't have any brush alcohol markers, so I just use fine, uh, the bullet nib and the chisel tip to color it all in. I like the Prismacolor markers, but the Ohuhu's are really cool and really cheap, so I enjoy using those ones a lot more. <laughs> they're cheap and my wallet doesn't hurt whenever I use them. Um, I'm just coloring it in here. I really like how this character turned out for kind of just being a design based off of three markers I pulled out of there. And I really like the little chibi style I went for here. It's kind of a new style that I haven't really experimented much with yet, but it, it looks pretty fun. And here we get to the actual collaging part. First, I started out by cutting out my character and um, just kind of trying to see if she'd fit on the page because I really didn't make the kind of, like, the measurements I should have. I kind of just eyeballed it. Then I went through my little collection folder and just pulled out whatever spoke to me or whatever I just thought fit the vibe and the theme. I picked out a lot of green pieces, which is funny because green isn't really a predominant uh, color in the piece, but it's... It, it turned out really good, I thought. Um, I just have a bunch of like stickers that I have squirreled away, some random pieces of scrap and things like that, and a little piece of poetry or something like that, and then some labels from like Lightning Label or something. I zoomed in here because I wanted to see how it looked, and it's actually a lot better, I think. Um, especially for such a small piece of paper. This was a piece of scrap paper that I decided to draw the same character on, but in my more, um, more of an anatomically correct style. Uh, a little bit of a mixture between anime and, like, a Disney princess looking style. I'm not quite sure how to explain it, but it's what I've been drawing in recently, besides that chibi one that I use.
And now on to the final spread. Um, here we are. I really did not like this spread in the least. I kind of went off my head and decided to do something in the old style before I actually decided to do art, to study art. And it did not turn out well because, of course, I was using all information that I had used before I learned art. So I didn't use any references, I didn't look at anything during this, and I made a very grave mistake. I don't like the styles of anything here, but it's fine. Like Bob Ross says, happy happy little mistakes happen, although I can't see anything about this being very happy. Um, I just drew a couple cats. I used to really be into warrior cats, so I got very good at- not very good, I wouldn't say very good, but I drew stylized cats a lot. I don't know what's up with their eyes, they're a little wonky. And this is my final little tip, which is stickers. Stickers, stickers, stickers. I don't use this one a lot. It's probably one I, the one I use the least out of all the tips I've given so far. But it is, I like to use stickers for just filling in those gaps. I have a lot of tiny stickers. I have like Polko stickers. I have washi tape stickers. And I use those for when I just am bored. I want to fill a spread or I think they'd look good on the page. Um, again, a lot of these tips are for when you don't really want to draw and you kind of just want to do a couple quick sketches and then have that page be done for. Or maybe you just want to go with a theme and you don't want to draw everything for that theme. So, yeah. These are some cats that I did. I don't like these ones. I, the middle one got really messed up on the eyes and I don't like that. <laughs> I filled them all in. It looks really weird. I should have kept it the way it was originally. Um, but yeah. Here I start on some sketches of like a rat and a magpie or something of that sort. I kind of like these ones the best out of this entire spread, although they still aren't very good. I got into a phase recently at the beginning of the year where I just drew rats non-stop. Rats every day, all day. Just rats. And I didn't even get good at them. I just drew them a lot. I kind of went through a rat obsession phase where I just, that's all I wanted to draw. I kind of wanted a rat, even though I'm pretty sure I... I mean, they're cute, but I don't think I'd want one long term. And I just, I couldn't stop it. I, I think I even designed my first persona for this channel to be a rat, which is really weird. Because, I don't know. It's cool, but it's, it's weird. I put in my title, which is another one of my tips. Just titles and lettering, just to add that kind of extra commentary on your art. And onto the stickers, my vast, vast sticker collection. I don't even know where I get half the stuff, this stuff from. Uh, I decided to use some just random uh, sticker roll stickers and washi tape ones and a couple polko ones. I think they're polkos. I'm not sure. I'm just sticking them down. I have these bear ones, these star ones, some like little emoji ones, and some like cat paw ones that kind of fit the theme of this page, which was weird animals. Well, these ones are more weird. They're more cute than weird, but I mean, it's the same, same. Oh, sorry if I bumped my camera a lot while I was doing this. It, I moved it to a new desk, the camera mount, and I just kept bumping into it. It was just, it was not having any of it. But, um, what do you guys think of this format? Do you like this kind of lighting? Do you prefer the other more, um, consistent lighting? Do you like the sped up formula? Please comment below. It really helps this channel and helps this channel grow.
just finishing up on the stickers here and just starting on the other ones. Well, <laughs> eventually, one day. Um, yeah. I don't really have much to say about this page. It was fine. This project was really cool, though. Um, basically, the idea is that me and my friend, we send this through the mail because we don't really live close to each other. And we just kind of fill out maybe f five or six spreads, sometimes eight, depending on how many pages are in each signature. And then I'll sew all these little signatures or booklets together to make one big sketchbook. And it's a lot lighter on postage because we, the shared sketchbook is really cool, although between you and me her drawings are much much better than mine but we share save on postage by doing this and we still get that whole experience although i'm a little scared for when i have to start book binding because i have experience but like it's experience from a while ago i really have to brush up on what i'm doing i think i'll do a coptic style uh journal kind of thing i really like that style it's kind of like the basic hardcover style but you've got some fancy stitching on the spine and there's less gluing involved. Um, I would highly recommend doing something like this with your friend. It kind of challenges you in a way, because you're like, oh, they're really good. I'm really bad. But also, it's just really cool to see art and like that other people have done, and like kind of get a look into their process. I like, I haven't added a lot here, but sometimes I like adding funny little notes. Um, little thoughts on my process or reactions to my drawings. It's just a cool thing to do. Alright, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me through this whole video. Um, have a great day!